WCB Podcast, your source for all things Chicago Blackhawks and everything hockey, with your host, Let's do it. Jerem and Tanner. All right. It's another edition of the WCV podcast back on the hockey podcast network presented by DraftKings and Raycon headphones. It's Jerem. It's Tanner. What's up, bud? Uh, nothing much, man. Just, you know, enjoying some exciting fucking playoff hockey. Dude, if. You needed to ever convince somebody that the NHL playoffs are the best in sports. This first round is the perfect example of how amazing this is. Yeah. Like, holy shit. There really wasn't a bad series. Which is which is funny, too, because, like, some of the series that we get kind of joked on that we didn't really care about, like, turned out to be really good, like the Bruins and Florida series. Like, oh, my God, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't give a shit about that one. Like, Bruins are going to sweep them. Oh, yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go over first round stuff. You had a couple sweeps that uh, that did not pan out. Both sweeps, I called, lost their series in seven. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, hey. we'll get into- I never said I was great at playing pick like picking picking teams in the playoffs. <laughs> My bracket is so bad that I don't even think I'm gonna open the app to look at it the rest of the way. It oh, it's pointless. So I took Tampa. Fun. I took Tampa to <laughs> yeah. win it all. You convinced me to switch my th- picks to Tampa. I wasn't even trying to convince you. You so convincing. just want to blame me. <laughs> no, you were just so you had such a convincing argument. It was you were so good. Oh my yeah, god! Should be a lawyer. Yeah, should be. But <laughs> so we'll get into our first round. Um, we'll recap the first round here in a little bit. We'll compare our picks to what actually happened. We'll give our second round predictions. Um, <laughs> Which will probably today. be wrong. <laughs> Which will be wrong today. Um, games start today already. I was kind of hoping there'd be one day off so we can get these picks out there before puck drop of game one. But uh, wow. NHL, it's got to get going. Let's go. Which hey. I'm here for it. I'm I'm pumped. I'm oh, ready yeah. recording early so we can be able to go watch these games. I am ready to go. Um, I think that's I mean the big reason is we had some amazing game sevens, and you don't want to like just have a day off where everybody's like, Oh, that was really exciting hockey we had this weekend. And then turnaround. nothing, right? Yeah, quick and then nothing. So it's like for, uh, keep, keep the good times going. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, let's start with some hot talk here really quick. Um, very little to talk about. Um, but actually before we get there, six years of the podcast. We oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we turned six years old. It's super crazy that this has been going on for so long. My longest relationship ever. Um uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you to all the listeners and people who follow and continue to follow. Um it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. Um all right, Hawkstock. Conditional yeah. picks come in. <laughs> glad, we, glad we got that done. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Conditional picks are becoming a little bit more clear uh, now that teams are getting eliminated and playoff pictures becoming set. Um, the first conditional pick that we got last year in the Brandon Hagel trade was the first round draft pick from yes. the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was top 10 protected. Clearly, That's the only condition. Be, yeah, not going to be top 10. Um, with Tampa being eliminated, uh, spoiler alert, um, the pick will become either 19 or 20. Oh, is it really 19 or 20? Yes. Yeah, so I cap friendly says 20, but mm-hmm. so I looked into it more. Um, if the Florida Panthers beat yeah. the Maple Leafs, it will become the 19th pick. If the Maple okay. Leafs beats the Panthers, it is the 20th pick. Oh, okay. Based yeah, that makes on, sense. Yeah, just based on playoff positioning or finishing. Yeah, like, so like, because every other team would finish behind them in the draft order if they were to correct. lose anyway. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right. Uh, we have no, like, do it, Florida. Keep going. Yeah, we have, doesn't matter. So Just one spot's one spot, but in a deep yeah. draft, like, better to move up one than back one. The other conditional pick, which fucking Patrick Kane fucked us. Uh, it would have been. 
Uh, we would have got a first round pick from the uh, New York Rangers if the Rangers reach the conference final. They go down in the first round, so it will remain a second round pick in this year's draft. So Tanner, which you- could be better, could be better. Yeah. I mean, if this is if this draft is the one that everybody's saying is like super deep, like would you rather have like a super deep second round pick or like I don't know because I haven't really heard much about the next year's draft, but let's say it's not as deep having like a late first rounder versus right now that's pick 56 this year. Is it pick 56? I was just pulling that up. Yeah. So with that pick in place, here's what the Hawks are looking at picks. Well, we're going to have a pick between one through five and we'll find out next week what that is. Then like you said, 19 or 20, depending on how the second round shakes out. Um, After that, the Hawks have their own pick at 35, which is pretty fucking good. Uh, then they have the 44th pick, which is from Ottawa in the Zaitsev trade for nothing, which was awesome. Um, so that's four picks right there in the top 50. And then they have 52, which is from Tampa. And that's for the Tyler Johnson trade, which was like Seabrook, Seabrook's Seabrook. contract. And then 56, which is the Rangers 67, which is the Hawks own pick in the third round. There's the 89th pick, which is from Dallas. And hold on, I forgot which one, what that was for. Because that was a, it was something we, oh, okay. We swapped picks with Arizona last year, third wow. round picks. So we moved our 94th overall pick last year for 89th this year, which turned, I mean, moving up in a deeper draft class. That's pretty nice. Um And then we round out the top 100 picks at pick 99, which is the Hawks' uh, fourth-round pick. So there's nine picks in the first 100 draft picks that the Hawks have. Damn. Yeah. And that's if they use all their picks or they don't acquire more. I was just about to ask, do you see them potentially packaging a bunch of these picks together to try to get another one in the first round? Possibly. I could see like how they did it with Toronto last year where they acquired Mrazic in the first for like a second because Toronto has a first round pick again. They acquired um, Boston's pick from Washington. That's 28 right now. Yes. Yeah. And that could be something that they'd look to move if there's any kind of contracts that they want to get out of there, depending on, um, how they finish this year, you know, I mean, they've, they've already kind of crushed some demons already. So I don't know how desperate they're going to be to like move cap space. Yeah. I don't know. I, but you know what I was, I was, I typed up a quick like piece for hockey buzz and just kind of talking about like, you know, where the draft picks sit and all this. And I'm like, as I'm typing this, I'm like, God damn, like for the first time in a long time, I'm actually excited for the future of the franchise. Yeah. Like, I know we don't know exactly what that future is going to be yet, but the fact that we have all these assets and we're going to be just refilling up our prospect pool with, and we're picked an amazing year to do it. Like it just keeps me inside how deep of a draft class this is. Like there is going to be a plenty of options and mm-hmm. there, who comes out of this draft could be what gets us over that, that hump and back into competitive hockey yeah oh god yeah i was saying before we started recording i was like i'm really hoping this draft turns out to be much like dallas's 2017 draft where they really set their team up for the future with ottinger jason robertson and Miro heiskanen and yeah. uh, not necessarily are we looking to get like a stud goalie or a stud defenseman but like if we can get three picks that we just nail at any position it would be super super clutch um, and then just looking at the like later part of the first round, like there's only a couple teams that still that are in the playoffs that have their picks currently. And that would be like Seattle, which they don't need to move anything because they don't have like cap issues. The wild. I don't know if they're going to want to move anything just because they just have dead cap Rangers. Last year too, if they can, if they can get through this next season, and mm-hmm. to be a competitive hockey team like they were this year, I mean, they might just hold on to whatever they can. Yeah, what they need, I mean, that's what they need to do is they need to keep those picks because 
right now they're kind of because they're cap strapped. They need to they need to have their young guys that are on these entry level deals be the ones that are contributing a lot more because they don't have the the cap space to afford veterans that can do it. Right. Um, but one team I was looking at was obviously Vegas. Vegas has their own pick in the first round this year. Right now it's sitting at 29. And honestly, like they're a team that's always up against the cap. And what they've done in the past few years is just giving players away for future considerations. But I mean, if you can squeeze that first round pick out of them, it's not like, like why not their first round pick prospect anyways. So you might as well, it's better off trading. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> get the pick. So you get to choose who you want rather than let them pick the guy and then trade for him. It's so crazy with Vegas. Like, I don't understand. Uh, I hate Vegas, man. I really do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is pretty pretty funny to me that the two exp- expansion teams are in the second round right now, though. Yeah. Um, some cool st- a cool stat about that one uh, when we get there. But, yeah, so more is going to come more clear with the, the draft situation as, t- you know, these teams keep getting eliminated. Um, I think a lot more is going to come up to light too once the lottery happens because you're going to have teams that, you know, we're hoping maybe to move up big that aren't going to move up big and they might not feel the need to stay stay where they're at and all that. So I think it's going to be a good time draft come draft time and free agency like that's it's going to be so much fun and I am so pumped that we're almost there. But got to enjoy some playoff hockey still before we get there. Oh God, yes. Uh, last thing that we have for Hawks talk here is Rockford is currently, uh, in the Calder cup playoffs and, uh, not doing too hot. Nah, dropped the first two games to the Texas stars. And also I was thinking about this too. When I, when I looked it up earlier and I was just like, it's not fair that Dallas gets to have a good NHL team and a good AHL team. <laughs> like that's horseshit. Can't do that. It's it shouldn't be allowed. Better. You can't either your AHL team's got to be good or your NHL team's got to be good. They both exactly can. that's bullshit. You can't but, you can't allow this to happen. Like you, you're not supposed to have the the cupboard stocked full of prospects and also have the team making the playoffs. Like that's not how this works. <laughs> is Dallas uh, AHL team good or the Rockford Ice Hogs just not good? Uh, maybe a bit of both. A lot of inexperience on Rockford. I mean, it's a bunch of young kids that are, you know, getting their first taste of pro hockey. And we were kind of talking about this earlier when we were talking about what to talk about. I mean, you kind of want that. You kind of want them to fill a little bit, get the taste of, you know, playoff hockey, get hungry. And it just it's just going to make for better, you know, development in the long run. It looks like the, the defensemen keep contributing a lot in these games too for the hawks or the yeah for the ice hogs like i think uh in the first game against the texas stars like alex vlasic got like two assists and they lost like five to three or something he's gonna be a stud like Mm -hmm. you're starting to see more yeah like people that cover the hawks are starting to talk more and more about how big of a piece he's gonna become yeah Uh, they're starting to hype up uh isaac bills a bit too yeah, I mean, deserves it. Like he played great when he was in his the action that he saw last year. Like I thought he did fantastic. I think he was one of the better defensemen out there at, at times. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, him, Ruse. Uh, then you still got Korchinski coming in, Del Mastro, mm-hmm. like all those guys too. Like oh god, I am so pumped for the future of this team. Let's go. Yeah, it's just crazy that uh, Lucas Reichel doesn't have a single point in the playoffs right now. Trade him. Yeah, get rid of him now. He's a kid's a bum. Cut his ass. Um, yeah. So that's going on. That's a best of five series. So potentially one more game. Um, and Rockford will be. Uh, I had no idea that Rob Klinkhammer was an assistant coach in Rockford. No shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> just I just they have it listed as in the team stats for the games. I'm a... like head coach and then assistants, and I was just like, no way. I like, love Klinkhammer. He, I don't. Did he ever play a game for the Hawks? I don't think so. I'm pretty I just, sure he got traded and then played for like Pittsburgh. Yeah, he had. I just remember he had an awesome preseason in 09. What was the year 
that they went overseas. Was that 09? No, it was the year after they won the cup. I think it was a lot like 2010, 2011. Yeah, so he had an awesome preseason. I remember going to the last preseason game before they left for uh for that trip and he game winning goal with like 10 seconds left in the game. It was fucking awesome. He was great. I wish he would have <laughs> but um yeah, last thing too here at Hawks Talk. Do you have any last good words, you know, put out into the universe to try to will the draft lottery balls into the Blackhawks favor. Cause next time we record, we will know if we are drafting Bedard or if we are all just going to be miserable. I wouldn't say we're miserable, but if we move back to five, that's misery. Um, Gary, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> owe us. You owe us. We need something good for once in this in this city. Give us something. Yeah, right. All right. It's been it's been too long. It's been too long. Yeah. Come on. Are you are you gonna have this new TV deal with ESPN and TNT and have the Hawks be one of the worst teams in the league? You know, it's not gonna it's not good. Like like legit, we talked about it already. It makes more sense when the Hawks are good. Even if you're not gonna give it to the Hawks, you got it. Like it's he needs to go to a big market. Yeah. He can't go to Anaheim. He can't go to Columbus. Anything on the on the West Coast where he's gonna have nine o'clock games all the time. Like it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, McDavid does amazing shit, but nobody watches it because all of his home games are past everyone's bedtime. McDavid is the greatest Instagram NHL athlete ever because everybody only watches his highlights on Instagram the next day. Yeah. But all right, moving on. Let's recap the first round. Um, we'll start in the Eastern Conference here. Let's start with the series that we were both very confident we're going to end quickly. Uh, the Boston Bruins versus the Florida Panthers. Tanner, you took Boston in four. I took Boston in five. Actuality, um, Florida Panthers in seven. After going down three to one, the Panthers proceed to come back and then go game seven in Boston in overtime and take the, take the series. Fucking incredible. 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 If you were to tell me that a Florida team would go down in their series three to one and come back and win in game seven, I would have said, yeah, of course, Tampa Bay is going to do that, (laughs) but it wasn't. It was was the fucking Panthers, man. The Panthers who barely made it into the playoffs. They literally stumbled into the playoffs and made it because Pittsburgh failed to beat Columbus in Chicago. (laughs) It's, oh my God, it is insane. I, it, the, I, it's funny because we also, not only did we mention that like we both thought Boston was going to win, but like we mentioned if Florida has any chance of winning, Matthew Kachuk needs to be like superhuman and goddamn was he <laughs> pretty much fucking close to that 11 points was a menace he was a fucking menace and it was great because he basically plays Boston hockey better than everybody on that team except for Tyler Batuzzi was just incredible during that series too <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ it's, it was just insane to see just some of the shit that like Matthew Kachuk was doing, like he scored between his, he did it like a between the legs goal, like in the playoffs. Like that's the stuff that you get benched for. <laughs> but he's like, pasta, pasta it's my, it's my, it, yeah, it's, it, it's like, it's my best chance at scoring here. And then like winning it in overtime, like almost starting a fight with all Mark getting into his head so fucking hard. And the fact that Boston went into game seven and was like, we're playing Swayman. Like <laughs> we got nothing. It's like, you yes. just set. You just had a history. You just set records this fucking season, and it's. I everybody has to know it by now. But if you set a record during the regular season and you face Bobrovsky in the first round, you're gonna fucking lose. Yeah, that's two of the biggest upset upsets in NHL playoff history, and Bob was in the net for both of them. Did so Bobrovsky went like three and one, didn't he? This this round. Yeah. Because he didn't start the first couple games. I don't know if he played game three or not. Let's see. 
Bob, well, yeah, Bob, I'm yeah. pretty sure he went three and one. Yeah, and see, I wonder what would have happened if they would have started him game one. Like, do you think that it could have been another like Tampa sweep situation? No, I honestly, I think this is probably best case scenario. Honestly, I don't yeah. think if you do he came in, came hurts, in real hungry, came in hungry, you came in with that that desperation. That whole team came going down three to one and having nothing to lose against a team that you had no business beating in the first place. Yeah. Like best, best case scenario for Florida because you know what? All the quotes that Matthew Kachuk had too, where he's just like, no one expects us to win any of these games. No one expects us to be here. And it's just like, did everybody hate Boston so much and love Matthew Kachuk now? Like, (laughs) is it, (laughs) I'm pretty sure Matthew Kachuk's like one of the more lovable guys at the moment because of what he just did to Boston. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. And yeah, just, he is so fucking good. And I think you can easily say, uh, Florida won that trade. Yeah. Because what <laughs> he's 24 years old and he's got eight more years or seven more years right now in Florida. God. And what's that stat? Um, of the President's Trophy winning team going on to win the cup like the next year. Like, is it Florida's year? I oh, honestly don't think so, but... No, 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 no. Because no. uh, Colorado did it last year when they won the President's Trophy the year before. Tampa did it. I don't remember... I mean, St. Louis didn't fucking win the President's Trophy. But I think it's like three Washington? years... Washington, did they win? Did it they? I don't know. Because I know they won it and they got knocked out early. It's it's happened more often than not over the last like past few years, though. Where like the President's Trophy winning team doesn't win that year, but then goes on to win it the the following season. But it's been a it's been a trend the last like three or four years. At least Tampa, Tampa twenty nineteen and winning in twenty twenty, but they went on to win twenty twenty one as well. Yeah. Um, but then Colorado right after that. But you know it's what just, you know what this means what, though. Yeah. No, what is it? It means the 2013 Blackhawks are still the greatest team in the salary cap era. Yeah. They, they actually still, completed it. Yeah, they can do it. They know what it does start to finish. You take the best record, you go in the playoffs, you win the cup. Mm. Just without a doubt. I, I we talked about it before. Like I really wonder if there was a full season. Yeah. The Hawks could have been flirting with the Boston numbers and and, and yeah. Like like I'm Tampa. really curious how that that team was out. yeah, the team was hungry. I mean the, the shortened season is also a reason they were probably like so hungry though too. Yeah. I'm it was sure. great. It's so cool. And guess I mean the greatest part after that was they won another cup, <laughs> which is so yeah. neat. Because <laughs> remember remember when we only had one and then we won a second, we're like, this is really cool. <laughs> and we won a third? Yeah, you're like, oh my God, we gotta stop doing this. This is crazy. <laughs> that was just misery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh moving along. Uh let's go with the series that will now determine who the Florida Panthers play. And uh, that was the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. You had Tampa Bay in seven. Of course. I had Toronto in seven. I mean. Reality, Toronto won in six. Yeah. They How finally, crazy. They finally did it. And they did it in overtime. Like, it's the drama. <laughs> Do you think Leaf fans, when they saw – going to game six in overtime they're just like oh fuck yeah i didn't i mean <laughs> even myself i was like there's no chance at least win this fucking game <laughs> it was so it was really funny because i was like all right i gotta put my son to bed i was like tampa either ends this early or i can get him to bed and then i'll be able to watch the rest of the game and then i came out and i saw that i saw this celebration and I saw the handshake line. I was like, it's not game seven. How did Tampa lose? <laughs> Why is Tampa shaking hands? <laughs> and, then, and I was like, oh, my God. They actually did it? This they actually crazy. did it. Oh, yeah. It was, so it was crazy. And I mean, of course, like, the goal itself isn't some magnificent, like, curse, like, curse-ending goal. It was they're really getting the bounces this year. They're really getting those things that they, they never got before. And it's just... I can't believe that it actually is happening. Like they're getting the, the hockey gods are like, okay, you've, you've 
<laughs> you've either, suffered enough. <laughs> either that they're suffered enough and they're gonna finally get their get their win, or they're just setting them up for the big even bigger disappointment. Uh, what's crazy though is did you see that the way Tavares scored the game winning goal? It was the exact same way he shot the puck last year with like three seconds left. It was like he came into the zone, come around the net, and he did like this turnaround spin shot. Yeah. The exact no same thing. Yeah. That's so it's kind, of, it's kind of cool, though. It, like he does the exact same thing and it finally goes in, finally gets that break, finally moves on. Do you think at this point that this is now Det- uh, Detroit, Toronto's cup to lose? Absolutely. Because I think that now that they finally got this monkey off their back, it's kind of like, oh shit like now it's getting it's gotten real like we're we're fucking we're here we're here we're hungry we've been we've been starving to fucking get here like and i think it, they just are gonna roll like honestly it's gonna be tough to beat that team i, I yeah i kinda wish it was boston though i really do yeah oh yeah oh god yeah for the story itself better. If they would go game seven and against Boston in Boston and fucking like do a come from behind like overtime win or some shit, like that would be insane. And then there would still be two rounds left for that. It's it's like this it would be basically the story of the nineteen eighty US Olympic team where you're like, Oh, that wasn't the gold medal game, by the way, when they beat Russia. Yeah. <laughs> like they still went on and had to win another game. <laughs> like that's what it would that's exactly how it would feel. Like it would be it would be crazy. I think it's just really funny. Uh, like obviously we have the better radish. Like definitely <laughs> Darren Radish. It goes off of his skate. Sorry, Taylor Taylor Radish's brother. Really you, know kind of, you know also is really funny is the fact that he was undrafted, but then the Hawks signed him originally to his entry level deal. Really? Yeah. Not and then that. he was traded to the Rangers, and the Rangers had traded him to Tampa. I, I'm pretty sure he was traded to Tampa and not signed. No, no, no. Actually, I think he was signed in Tampa, now that I'm remembering when I look back at it. I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah, he's his older brother. Tanner with the facts. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me look it up real quick. So he signed his entry-level contract in 2018 and 2019, but didn't play – for the, the Hawks at all. I just played in Rockford. He got traded in, I think it was just a minor league deal. Yeah, we had Peter, we got Peter Holland out of it to the Rangers. And then he signed a deal with uh, Tampa. And I think it was, was that just this year. Yeah. yeah, he signed a deal in Tampa this year. No, 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 sorry. He signed one last year. And then this year he actually made a bigger impact, I guess. Because he got rid of his brother. Yeah. So they traded the wrong one to us. That's fine with me. Oh, uh, you mean they traded the right one to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for them. Yeah, for them. Yeah. For them, it's the wrong one. But yeah, man, I I am pumped for Toronto fans. Um, definitely deserve it for all the crap they've been through. Yeah. And it's just it's just it's so it's so bittersweet just seeing like Toronto winning and all this and then Boston's misery and all that kind of stuff. Like, Yeah. I mean, Oh, the thing I didn't even mention too, is like everybody was in our group chat was saying like, they think that the bigger like embarrassment is Tampa getting swept by Columbus. But I, I honestly think that's Boston getting swept or not swept, but Boston losing. You blew a three, one lead. Exactly. You needed one win to move on. Like, sure, Tampa didn't get even a single win, but, like, they had three. And then they had three more chances to get one fucking win. That's all they needed, and they they couldn't do it. And how, how long has the joke been about Toronto blowing the 3-1 lead against Boston back in 2013? Well, 10 years then, if you're going to ask how long. <laughs> I'm saying, though, like, no, like, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's like, though, it's like, so you're saying that what you mock – the Maple Leafs for, yeah, and you still don't think that that's the same embar like you don't think that that's the bigger embarrassment like you you make fun of yeah. a team for doing the exact same thing. And Boston theoretically, I mean, yeah, Tampa they, did that. They were they winning. They, they, they were winning break. the last minute of the fucking game too. Yeah, oh, like man. they they gave up a goal and and they had like Florida had an empty net. They gave up a six on five goal with like a minute left in the third period. And then Florida was all over them. It was incredible. 
<laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Boston's way more embarrassing than yeah than uh, Tampa for sure. Light the lamp during the hockey playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can make a $5 bet and score $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code THPN. New customers can make a $5 hockey playoff bet and score $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling call. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinem.org in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hills Casino Resorts, KS. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restriction applies. See show notes for offer details. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsibilities, gambling resources. Let's face it with coffee starting at $5. Yes. Even without customization and our bank accounts always somehow depleting. We are officially entering a dupe session. Most products do the same thing, but Priced differently solely based on the brand name. So a good duplicate or dupe is critical for getting the highest quality at the best price. One dupe you definitely shouldn't sleep on, Raycon wireless earbuds. Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point so you can listen to what you want, when you want, without breaking the bank. Raycon mission is to provide that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound, essential smart tech listening features. You can get a pair and a spare and still pay less for them. What you would pay with some of those other big name tech brands out there. Raycon knows that this, in this economy, every purchase needs to be perfect. They offer buy now pay later options right now. You can pay as little as $18 at checkout. They have an easy and free return guarantee. They offer two years of product protection insurance for just a few bucks. They offer free domestic shipping and flat fee international shipping, and they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Uh, some of the great reviews uh, focus on the eight hours of playtime, water resistance, and sweat resistance, crystal clear call quality, and so much more. Uh, go buy Raycon uh, now at raycon.com slash THPN today. And get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash THPN to score 15% off buyraycon.com slash THPN. Um, all right, moving on to uh, the Rangers and Devils. Uh, you took the Rangers in seven. I took the Devils in seven. The Devils won in seven. Congrats. Thank you. Um, this was one that I didn't get to see game seven. But also talk about like the roller coaster of emotions. Like, first I was like, "Oh crap, the Rangers are gonna sweep." Like, there's just no, oh, yeah, not even a shot in hell that New Jersey wins this series. And then they go to New York, and the Devils decide that they want to play home ice advantage in New York. Yeah. And then what was it? Just back and forth the rest of the way. And then it was home team one back to back, and then the Devils just completely shut them out. Game seven. What it was, it was so weird to go from seeing the Rangers win like two games, like five goals to whatever, to the Devils switching their goalies, and then the Rangers going, "Oh, we don't know what to do anymore." <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah, it was so weird. But I mean, hats off to the Devils, man. If you get smoked two games in a row to start a series and end up winning in seven like it's I mean, those kids those kids man they they don't get brought down that easily and that's experience right there like like no matter mm -hmm. what happens now going forward it's like these kids have shown that they can battle back and they can yeah. stay in a fight they might get knocked down but they're not staying down they're they're coming back up swinging yeah it's like you devil fans have got to be excited for this future man like this yeah. team is i mean so other good. than the fact that team of meyer got murdered oh <laughs> it's the type of shit i'm telling you man having jacob Trub on the team like fucking, clean, that shit's clean hit, terrifying right? clean hit right yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah just making sure yeah he was just he i told you before the playoffs started that guy's a game changer and like i don't know how your team doesn't 
come up and fire home some fucking goals after that fucking hit. But I, it, it, Jesus, that, I don't know. That team completely changed somehow from after game two where they could not find the back of the night, except for like game six. They were like, oh, yeah, there it is. And then they were like, oh, we lost it again. So we should, we need it. Um, but yeah, I mean, talk about going all in and just not panning out. Now it's yeah. like they're going to be tight on the cap. You got they still have their first up. round pick, which is just crazy to me. Like they went, they went and got Tarasenko. They went and got Kane. Like I don't even know if they made any other small moves or anything. I can't even remember. But the they was, still, how, like they did that all with keeping their first round pick. What was Kane's final number for that series? Oh, I don't know. I think he only got points in like the first two games. Woof. But I mean, nobody on that team got points. He like had six three, points. Three, four, and uh, or three, four, five, and seven. One six goal, points. And five assists. Yeah, one goal, five, seven six. games. Sounds about right. So, yeah, I don't know. Now the question. I mean, we're not going to talk about it today, but the rule next question is. Where does King go? Honestly, like Buffalo, but where would he? Where would be great? New Jersey. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, can you oh, imagine yeah. him and him and Jack Hughes on the same line? That'd be fucking amazing, dude. What is New Jersey's cap situation? Do they? Do they ever sign? Uh, no. Tomo? No. Got a mil or no? They're at the cap limit right now. Yeah, but, who but they, they have all their pretty much all their forwards besides Hughes, Hiche, Hisher, and uh, Palat are on one year deals. Kratz like, and RFA, Timo's an RFA. Yeah. Frankoff, whatever you say his name. What? Bugfist? <laughs> what? Bugfist? No. I didn't hear what you were talking about. Igor. 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 Yeah. Igor. yeah. What? <laughs> I'm trying to. Oh, oh, Sharangovich. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sharangovich, that kid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. also, I don't know if you, like, when you were watching that series at all, but that Dawson Mercer kid, he's fucking good, man. And I think he doesn't get talked about a lot, just because Jack Hughes gets a lot of the that that like spotlight. That's that's a spot but to be in, man. Like Dawson Mercer, their twenty twenty uh, first round pick. He's gotten he's two seasons in right now. He's at ninety eight points in one hundred and sixty four games. He's got three points in the playoffs right now. The kid looks good. That's the kind of shit that I kind of I just I really want like. I just really want to have that now. <laughs> like those young studs that are fucking awesome to watch. It's coming, man. It is yeah. coming. Yeah. I think it's exciting. At least two more years, but it's coming. All right. Lap, lap, bleh. We will wrap up the Eastern Conference here. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes versus the New York Islanders. We both took Carolina in six, and Carolina won in six. <laughs> Just as I just as I predicted, like every other series. <laughs> this one, um, I didn't pay much attention to this series. Yeah. But I think the funniest thing that came out of it was the Aho on Aho crime. There was tons of it. Uh, they, they were going at battle. Only one Aho or two Sebastian Ahos go in, only one can come out. Clearly, Carolina one was gonna win. But oh yeah. The yeah, team's just, just the team's just good. Like they're good all all throughout, and it's crazy because they're doing it without Petretti or Svechnikov. But I mean, the Islanders weren't like a super strong team going into the playoffs either. For another team that kind of limped in, mm -hmm. like, they get they, they, that have a business being in there. Pitts, Pittsburgh li literally opened the door wide open for them at the end of the year. They're like, ah, just kidding. You go ahead. Pittsburgh fucked up. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to switch over to Western Conference then, real quick? All right, let's so moving on to the Western Conference, and we are joined by special guest Oakley. What's up, buddy? <laughs> yeah, thank you, dude. Okay. <laughs> that worked out perfectly. Yeah, 
He knows how to respond. Yeah. All right. So oh, I just lost my pick or picks. Damn it. One second here. All right. Back to that. Um, we'll kick it off in Colorado. It was the Colorado Avalanche versus the Seattle Kraken. Tanner, you had Colorado in four. I had Colorado in five. Seattle in seven. Um, yeah. I, I honestly, part of me thought, you know, Florida could put up a fight. Zero percent of me thought Seattle had a shot. Yeah. Is it the same? <laughs> I mean, I was, finished the series with a nine two six save percentage. Like that's the whole reason. Revenge. That's the greatest. That's the greatest part about, uh, like the playoffs, man. Like you, even if you think that you have like the best goalie, aka all mark of like basically a Vesna season, you your team can still go down at seven. And the other thing is like, Rubauer moved like I, I him in Colorado had parted ways. And they brought in Darcy Kemper, went on, won a cup. Grubauer went to Seattle, and now he's like, oh, hey, weird seeing you guys here. Yeah. I'm going to shut you down. <laughs> you guys want your, your, you want your repeat? Not yeah. happening. Not, not on my watch. And then it's, again, just the Kraken just doing it as a full team. You know, everybody's contributing. They have literally no one standing out stats-wise. Their, their, their goal leader right now is Jaden Schwartz with two goals, and he's tied with two other players. <laughs> Their points leader is Yanni Gord with six, like, and he's got five assists. So that's a lot different than like Miko Rontanen had seven goals. That's literally more. I mean, he's got more goals than the top leader in points on Seattle. <laughs> Devin oh, Tays had eight assists. He's still lose. That's insanity. Yeah, that's man. Impossible. Oh no! It's yeah, it's just, it's great. It's good stuff. What was the series even? It it would just go back and forth, huh? Uh, Seattle went up three to two and then Colorado won. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I love though that Seattle won game one and just completely blew your chance at a sweep. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just I was like, all right, that's cool with me, man. Like the Avalanche will win in five. <laughs> yeah, and then I did, Seattle I did. went up in the series and I was like, okay, never mind. Yeah, so Seattle, I mean, ragtag group of players, you know, it's just Kind of cool because everybody was talking so much crap about their uh, about their draft expansion draft, yeah. and then boom, now they are in the playoffs here. Yeah, they didn't make the playoffs year one like Vegas, but they made it year two, and they've already made it to the second round for the first time in Vegas Golden Knights history. The Seattle Kraken make it to the second round. <laughs> it is also the first time in NHL history that a team wins their first playoff round against the defending Stanley Cup champions. Oh wow, that's pretty first neat. time ever. And you know what's funny about so about <laughs> Seattle um, winning this playoff series is it reminds me it this is how the playoffs remind me so much of the 2019 playoffs because two of like the stud teams that year which was Calgary in the West and Tampa in the East both losing in the first round to the like eight seeded teams and even though like Seattle was the seventh seed Colorado was clearly like looked at as like the favorite to come out of the West. Yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> like they're they're done, and so out of the all the teams that were in the the conference finals last year, all the only one that's left is Edmonton, so it's a completely new like playoffs. It's just yeah. great. I love I love years like this. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up when we talk about uh, give our yeah. Sorry, I just brought up. A little no, it's fine. No, it's awesome though. It's like. It's like, yeah, you love seeing, like, you know, the same, like, you know, the superstars, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I mean, again, this is how you grow the game is, yeah. you know, by having more fan bases involved. Oh, and, and the oh. fact that <laughs> – and the fact that there's going to be all these fresh matchups and what was the the, mo- the latest team to win the cup or the last team to win the cup that's still in the playoff was the Hurricanes back in 06? Yep. That's fucking insane. That is awesome. That is so good for the game. It, it's it's great you got always love a new champion when it when it comes around yeah um all right, and even if it is carolina that wins it i mean it's okay. been what like 14 no 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 17 years 17 years yeah so all right next up you have the golden knights versus the winnipeg jets uh you took the jets in six i took <laughs> vegas in six and it ended up being vegas in five hannah what happened uh, the Winnipeg Jets did exactly what the Winnipeg Jets did in from February to the end of the season, and that was go on vacation. 
There, there is so much shit going on in Winnipeg. Coach is calling the players out. Players are calling the coach out. Yeah. Oh, shit. But, I mean, if, it, if this isn't the first time the coach has called the players out, I mean, it's not the first coach that's called these players out. Like, you think it's probably on the players at this point. Yeah. Like, Jesus, come on. Like, the, the team on paper and literally the team in NHL 23 is what – like everybody thinks would be like a really good team, but the team in real life and on the ice is just completely dysfunctional and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Um, all right, let's move on to Dallas <laughs> and Minnesota. Say, you didn't want to say anything about Vegas. I don't think Vegas has a chance. Second round, really. No, I don't like, I, I, I Vegas to me is Boston. Like, I just yeah. – anybody but Vegas. I think the thing with Vegas is, like, they had probably the easiest matchup of the eight matchups, and then they just got the – they got the job done like they needed to. What there was – I don't – I mean, I don't think there was very much, like, pushback from Winnipeg. Like, you know, oh, yeah. coach mentions it. Like, there was – there was no – like, the, the guys that are supposed to be the standout players are – just kind of they're watching. The Jets had their first game. They won five to one, and that was it. Yeah. After that, so I was like, "Oh, I'm a genius." Yeah. <laughs> and then no. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens, especially too. Um, Hella Bucks on his last year of his deal, and he straight out said, "I'm not interested in a rebuild." So I mean, you got to imagine he's going to get moved here pretty soon. Oh, move to Chicago. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Great. Yeah, we'll take him go for a couple seasons. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to Dallas versus Minnesota. Let's see. Dal- you had Dallas in five. I had Minnesota in six. It ended up being Dallas in six. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess I just overestimated the willpower that Minnesota had. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is that it's come out that Minnesota's basically had the same kind of streak that Toronto's had of, like first round exits, it's just Toronto's done it in such a fantastic fashion that nobody's really paid attention to Minnesota. But like I said, when I said uh, them in, in or Dallas in five is the fact that Minnesota is just a disappointment in every sport. And so like they're bound to lose. That's very fair. And I should have went with that. I just don't know what they were doing by putting flurry in game two. Yeah. After, after winning the, the first game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand that. But yeah, I don't know if that was a difference maker or anything like that, but I think like you talked about earlier, like how you want the Hawks to kind of have the Dallas Stars, you know, draft yeah. history. And it's like this is kind of showing like this is a very yeah. realistic reality for the Hawks about and you're seeing it in Dallas. Yeah. And it's kind of nice seeing that they are able to consistently be competitive the past few years. It's, well, that's the thing that like I don't think people realize about Dallas is like they were in this final in 2020 with a with not the guys that are producing currently. Yeah. They were a game away from I would I think the final in 2019 because St. Louis St. Louis or oh, not the final but maybe the conference final. Mm-hmm. But St. Louis won that game in game 7 overtime. Yeah. Eddie Maroon, but like they were very competitive with different guys up front and they've maintained com- like their competitiveness with like a new kind of set of guys like they've been steadily competitive and they drafted really well and they're staying that way and it's kind of crazy to see that because you don't really see that very often like the whole reason pittsburgh's been good forever is because like crosby's been good forever yeah but like dallas was good because sagan and ben were good now dallas is good because rupe hints and jason robertson are good and it's just like weird to see that kind of transition <laughs> yeah i mean we'll in the like now that they have ottinger before they had like ben bishop and anton hudobin and just they just keep rolling sucks that they're in the central but good thing you're supposed, you're supposed to have the dip you're supposed to have the dip where you're not as good but they didn't they they fucking increased <laughs> like they just pass through that that glass ceiling and just keeps going just Keeps going. 
All right, last matchup in the first round in the West uh, was the Edmonton Oilers and the LA Kings. Uh, you took Edmonton in six. I took Edmonton in seven, and it was Edmonton in six. Nailed I'm just it. nailing. I, I'm really good at calling the Western Conference and really poor at calling the Eastern Conference. <laughs> I thought I honestly I thought LA was gonna put up a little bit more of a fight, but I mean again, this is a team that I hate to keep saying like all oh, the Hawks can like you know look at pop fans can look at and kind of feel good about, but it's like this is another team that kind of retooling. They were competitive at the same time as the Hawks. They they did their retool yeah. and, and it's paying off, and they are showing that this is gonna be a competitive team. I think for for years to come. I don't know. If it's going to get back to the heyday, like back in 13, 14, you know, when they're winning cups and all that, but they're, they're going to be a good team. And it's just a bonus that they're in a, in the division they are. Yeah. I, that's, I, that's a huge plus for them is the fact that they're in the Pacific, but I think they've also kind of landed on a little luck with kind of like how the Rangers were like the Rangers got a little bit, got, they exited their rebuild slash retool a little bit earlier than they, they were planning because of, the luck that they struck with like getting the second overall pick into the first overall pick yeah. and then just start and just kind of being a, a monster. And that's kind of the way LA is turned out a bit because like they ended up getting like Byfield, who's now con- going to be contributing a few of like young guys that they've gotten, like have turned out pretty well. Like they, they did a great job at like not strapping themselves into like really shitty contracts like the Hawks did where they were able to pick up guys like Kevin Fiala and Victor Arvidsson yeah. that like have really made an impact on that team. And, oh, even Philip Deneau, like he's insanely amazing. But I think it's just that it's that kind of year where McDavid's having like that McKinnon kind of year where he's like, I obviously am going to have to do everything myself. Otherwise, I'm never going to win a Stanley Cup. So me and Leon here are going to – basically tie the team to our back and skate them through a goddamn brick wall. The two of them put up a combined 21 points in that first round. With McDavid not even scoring in the first game. So it's really 21 points between the two. Or I think Leon maybe had two points, but like 19 points between the two of them in five games. It's, it's, it is so stupid that how good those two are and they still can't get it done. I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, we the talk- fact that LA was able to push some of those games to OT or like make it really competitive into the third period just shows you like how deep LA is versus Edmonton. Yeah. That's the problem. Like you get a team that's able to do a full, you get four full lines out there rolling. Yeah. Which lines. is what you need in the playoffs. Yeah. Like Edmonton, like they just, I just, I don't know. I just don't feel confident enough that they have what it is to get over that hump to, to really be considered a legitimate contender. Like, I know it's hard to say that when you have McDavid, and McDavid but it's like, I don't know. But with, like, without a proven champion currently in the West, it's wide open for them to kind of, I would, like we said, stumble into the playoffs, like Florida and Islanders, like they can kind of stumble their way into the final. Like, I, but they can stumble away in the final. That doesn't mean they're going to win it. I think. Oh yeah, no, absolutely gonna, not. Like, the shut down teams in the in the West or the East. Like oh. I just don't think they can do it. It's just they like them them being in the Pacific is it, this this just shows like they they have the easiest trip basically because you get L A, who's a good team but not like I would say Stanley like a contending kind of team, and then you get Vegas, who is going with like a third or fourth string goalie right now and are just like a, like such an odd, odd team too, where they're all, they're different like every year because they're trying to be like, Oh, well it didn't work with these guys. So let's get rid of them and, and bring in other guys. Like it's, I don't know. I don't think Vegas is going to be like a that good of a matchup against Edmonton either, because it's just McDavid and dry are going to tear them a new asshole. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. So, so that wraps up our first round, the recap of the first round. You want to move on to second round prediction? We'll wrap this up. Yeah. All right. You want to start west or east? Uh, we can start in west. west. All right. So we'll stick with the one you were just talking about because you pretty much gave your answer. Yeah. Vegas, Edmonton. Edmonton. You're taking Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. Who, how, uh, how many games? Oh, uh, 
Jesus. Like, I just don't think Vegas has a good chance, but they'll probably have a game or two that they absolutely light up Stuart Skinner or Campbell. So maybe Edmonton in six. That's what I was thinking too. It's just, I don't think Vegas has the goaltending to, even if they do light up Stuart Skinner or Jack Campbell, it'll end up, they'll probably lose like seven to eight. Like, because it's gonna be high game, I think. yeah. Oh, it's going to be, you remember last year when Edmonton and then uh, Calgary faced off in the second round and every game was like six to seven, even though Calgary just had played like very low scoring games in the first round. It's going to be like that. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's going to be just a shootout. Oh, one thing we oh. forgot, to, I forgot to mention about um, Edmonton or Vegas. Yeah, Bill Kessel was health bombed in that series. Ah. That was the oh, first really? game he missed since October thirty first, two thousand and nine. That's crazy. And I just realized, you know what we're getting? Eichel versus McDavid finally in the playoffs. Oh shit! Yeah, the twenty fifteen. Top two picks. McDavid's gonna fucking yeah. It's gonna be yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that too. Yeah, let's go. I, it just came to my head. I was like, oh yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> There's a connection somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Everybody forgets about Jack Eichel. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you cry, you cry, you cry, you cry, and then go to yeah. fucking Vegas. All right, uh, Seattle, Dallas. Uh, I think it's going to end up being Dallas just because they are actually fully healthy, unlike Colorado was. I just, yeah, I don't know. Seattle, though, man, they're going to probably just surprise their way. It's going to be the way the Vegas did it in 2017, where everybody just goes, they're going to lose this round. Like, they're going to lose, they're going to finally not be in first. They're gonna they're gonna lose eventually. They're gonna lose this round. They're gonna lose this round. They're gonna lose this round. Like watch them just fucking go all the way. Like, and that's why I'm taking Seattle in seven. <laughs> How funny would it be if Seattle like wins a cup before Vegas? <laughs> Love it. After Vegas completely destroys everything that they have asset wise to try and be competitive, and Seattle just goes, "Oh, we have everything still and a cup now." <laughs> yeah. Oh, this. All right. So, what are you taking, Dallas? <laughs> oh, this. Yeah, I'd say Dallas in like. Dallas and seven. Seven. All right. All right. Like I said, I took Seattle and seven there. Um, let's go Carolina, New Jersey. Which, by the way, this is the only playoff matchup that has ever happened before. The other three series oh, okay. are all all are all first time. Yeah, that makes sense. With that probably happened around like 2006. Yep. Um I mean, that's a that's a tough one. It's gonna be a good. The series. Kids are rolling, dude. That's the thing. Like, I think I might go Jersey. Like, I might take New Jersey in six. Yeah, I'm taking. Actually, right, seven. I'd say seven. I'm taking seven. All right, I'm taking Jersey in six. Um, I just this is gonna be a fun, fun series. Yeah. So New Jersey in six or seven? You said right. Yeah, I'll say seven. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is going to be a fun series. Like the the East, I can give two shits about the West at this point. Like, yeah, they're going to be focusing on these two series. Like, this is going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, I wanted to be on the the Devils bandwagon so bad. Like, I just I love Jack Hughes. I love what this team is. You know, finally being competitive and all that. So now that New York is out, I'm totally on the Devils bandwagon. Although I want Toronto, yeah. I'm I'm pulling for Toronto, but the Devils, like, let's go. Like, yeah. I honestly would be happy if any four of these teams in the in the in the East win. Yeah, I would be legitimately perfectly fine with it. Yeah, perfectly fine with it. Um, and then the last series, Toronto, Florida, it's gonna be surprising. Florida and four. You digging it? You digging it? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Like, how much of a, how how Toronto would it be to completely collapse round two because you've never been there since two thousand four? <laughs> you really taking Florida and four? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I it, like I'll be I'll be ecstatic if I'm like completely wrong, but if I'm right, how fucking funny would that be? That would be great, especially since that. it's one of those. It's Florida was a, a President's Trophy winner last year. It's I mean it's their cup to win. This is the perfect storm series that it's like you can see either team. You can make great cases for why 
they are going to win this series and they're going to go win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be really funny. I mean, Toronto's just getting more time in Florida. <laughs> Man. And Florida is throwing up the big guns, banning oh, Canadian yeah. residents from buying tickets to, to yeah. Florida games. Which is funny because it's like you can just go on StubHub. <laughs> StubHub, yeah, there's plenty of aftermarket there. So, all right, you're going to have some explaining to do Noli on that one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if, if Florida wins game one, you're going to be like, oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will find out tonight. Uh, that game kicks off. Wait, what did you say? Did you say Toronto? <laughs> I, said, I said Toronto in six. In six, okay. Yeah. I Matthew I, Kachuk, Con Smythe winner. I. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like, I like Con Smythe written all over him right now, dude. Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's will. Oh man, Florida goes. They're they're definitely unless Bob is just lights out the rest of the way. Stone wall. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I one of those things I think nobody really talks about when they when they're like who deserves a cup. It's like nobody really brings up Dabrowski, but like he's been pretty goddamn incredible for like all most of his career. A couple of Vesnas and like the problem with him though is like when he's good, he's good. But when he's bad, yeah. he is bad. Yeah, he's very mediocre if he's bad. It's it's oh man, there's no there's no middle for him. It's one way or the other. It's insane. But yeah, so that that series kicks off tonight. Um, we'll already know what happened by the time you're listening to this. All oh, the game started already. Um, oh yeah. And the Kraken and Dallas Stars are the second game today, and then Devils, Carolina, Edmonton, Vegas will be the next day. Uh, so yeah, we are excited for this the series. The Eastern Conference is probably going to be our spotlight. Uh, going forward. Um, we'll, we'll obviously hit on the West, but yeah, so it's right. exciting hockey that we got. You got, you got anything else? No, no, right. <laughs> what do you want to call it. Um, man, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I just like everything that I'm thinking of is like way too long of a post, like title, because it's like. Like, how did we get here? <laughs> like, is this is this 2019 all over again? Like, um, you said it. Exciting hockey. Smell you, smell you later, Boston. <laughs> smell you, Boston. <laughs> smell you later, Boston. All right, so yeah, smell you later, Boston episode. Because we are technically the least podcast for foreseeable future. So, um. Yeah, episode 222. Um uh, later Boston. Make sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, five star review all there. Uh download DraftKings, use uh promo code THPN. Uh go buy some Raycon headphones, uh code uh THPN for 15% off. Uh social media at WCB Podcast at THPN on everything. Uh yeah, and we will see you on the next one. All right. Love you, boys. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the WCB Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast. To connect with Jerem and Tanner, check out the boys at WCB Podcast on all social media. We'll see you next time.